Welcome in to the Thursday, September 14th edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, so glad you are here. We had some comments after the Morocco episode yesterday. Um, one left by a very faithful, long-time listener. Hey, Julie. <laughs> and she was talking about... Right away, instinctually, what I thought makes sense to pull is an astrocartography chart to see what line runs through Morocco. I would be curious to know if that's actually a Mars Chiron line. Well, good question. No, but the Uranus line, the Uranus ascendant line runs right through western Morocco. But interestingly, so does the descendant or Imam Kueli, Jupiter, Venus, and the sun-moon midpoint runs through Morocco. And both would have been close enough in proximity to affect this. Where the epicenter was just south, southwest of Marrakesh would have been right about in between those two lines. The Uranus Ascendant line makes sense to me. The other one does not. Julie had a couple of other good points, and I said, Hey, Kristen, this is perfect for Discord. So if you are not in our Discord channel, the link is up at the top of the funastrology.com website. It's free to join, and Kristen Lawhead runs that great discussion over there, so I'll bet by the time you hear this, they're already talking about it. Let's talk about the new moon real quick today, and then I have one other thing I'd like to sneak in here. So at 9.39 p.m. tonight is the new moon, 22 degrees, third decanate of Virgo. And when I cast my chart for 9.39 p.m., where I am in Asheville, North Carolina, it's close enough. That's the geography I use. The action is all in the fifth house. So let's put all this together. So we have the sun and the moon in the fifth house at 21 degrees. We have the third decanate ruler is Taurus slash Venus. Are you hearing roll the dice? <laughs> I am. New moon creating fifth house speculation. Also fun for those of you in a committed relationship. Wink, wink. 9.39 p.m. Eastern time. Fifth house. Okay, Thomas, let's get this train back on track here. Hey, I can't make the chart up. I just read it. Y'all have fun. But hey, this is a time to roll the dice. If you are going to do a new moon ceremony tonight, Taurus and money are in the picture. Certainly, so are relationships. The relationship with yourself being the most important one. Create there first. And it's also in a grand trine with Pluto, Uranus, and Jupiter. Hey, universe, create for me a grand surprise of wonderful things that will make me happy, fifth house, make me smile, Venus, and create for me new possibilities around these key areas of money and relationships, especially with all the things happening. I'm getting so much from you guys in the readings, and I'm hearing the economy is starting to slow down. This has not been unexpected. We've been talking about it for about a mm, couple of years, <laughs> you know, all the way back to 2021 when Saturn and Uranus squared. But look, here's an opportunity. Here is a window of creating energy from the universe that is themed around money of one of the several areas. But that's one. So keep your focus where your focus is going to serve you. But I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm just making suggestions based on the chart. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. All right, we have a great listener. She is in the armed services. So thank you, first of all, for your service, Kimberly. And this is a catch-up because I got a little bit behind on these. But she was asking about the Uranus return. And here's the deal. Kristen and I are working on this graphic that we are going to put all the outer planets aspects so the you know, sextiles, trines, squares, oppositions, etc., for all of it on a life timeline so that you can look ahead from where you are or you can watch ahead for your kids and anticipate where these upcoming aspects are on your life timeline. We'll let you know when it's available, but we're working on it. So our career service lady is asking about the early 40s. The Uranus return. So, yeah, how do we weather it <laughs> so that we are not, you know, maybe it's all the other things in our chart. Or And I've been feeling, you know, Scorpio reaching out like, hey, I'm trying to help you. But, um, yeah, how do we how do we weather if we're in a Uranus opposite Uranus situation and we feel like we're too young for all this? Um, how do we weather um, the crisis and keep right on going? Because I ain't got time for that. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Kimberly is so fun. 
I just edited an interview that I did with Fred Dodson, the audiobook author that I've done over 30 books with. And we talked about this in the one of the it's not out yet, but it's coming out. So watch Subconscious Mind Mastery. And it's the interview around clearing entities. I'm teasing because it might be a couple of weeks or at least a week before it comes out. But we talked about this and entities is not the conversation here. It's high consciousness living. And Fred said for the 10 years or so that we've worked together, he, he said, have we, either one of us had major disruptions, major challenges in our lives over the last decade? And I mean, we've had stuff happen. We always do. I mean, he had to escape out of a country before lockdowns became too intolerant for him. That was his personal preference, and he made his personal choices of what to do, and it was quite a story. I've had stuff. My ongoing heart issue keeps going. I'm still claiming healing for it, but it just hasn't showed up quite yet. It's getting better. But broadly, generally, not a lot of drama. In fact, I've told this little bit of it, whiffed around on this a little bit, but I did have a little encounter with something a couple, about a month or a little more ago. It so disarmed me that the stark contrast was like, wow, okay, knew I had to make some changes. And that was originated from positive intentions, trying to help. But Fred's point in the podcast, and my point here, is that you have to guard your high consciousness living. And this is why I'm so particular with it. And that thing about a month ago was a wake-up call of shore it up a little bit. And this is where we all have to dance between jobs, partners, children, family, friends, all the externals that can get us off course. We have to be so deliberate to bring us back on course. But it all has to flow from the top of the waterfall is high consciousness living as depicted in the book Levels of Energy. So if you haven't heard that or read it, I would suggest the audiobook. It helps support the podcast. But Levels of Energy by Fred Dodson is your starting place. And you have to stay in those high consciousness vibrations all the time. And the message that I'm on lately is a lot of the time we get off of those but don't think we're off of them. So it really is this thing of self-examination. And that's why the sky is so beautiful to give us these windows of opportunity to do that along the way. I also can't wait to get that graphic out. That is going to be so cool. All right, you guys have a great Thursday. Back to set up the weekend and TGI Friday tomorrow. We actually have an exact aspect in the sky tomorrow, too. Come back and find out what it is.